Hello and welcome to this Python tutorial. We are going to do some sentiment analysis on tweets. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to uh, use a streamlet to make a web app and then turn it into a sentiment analyzer. Very easy steps. Now we're going to build two things here. Let's start with the interesting one, analyzing CSV or Excel sheets. So I can simply drag and drop a file, which is Biden tweets here. And what it does, the file itself, this file only had this column and this column. That is only tweets and numbers, index numbers. But as soon as I dropped it here, it calculated the score of sentiment of each tweet and turned that value into neutral, positive or negative. Now you can see that this, for example, is kind of neutral, a bit towards positive. These scores are from minus one to plus one. Then you can download the whole CSV file, not just these five rows. So if you click on this one, you can download it. Okay, that's one thing. But the first thing we are going to build, and we'll build up from there, is analyzing first simple sentences or texts. For example, if I say something like this is a car, you can see there is no positivity or negative negativity there. So that's why the polarity, that is positivity or negativity, is zero. It means it's neutral. If it were minus one, it means so negative, plus one, so positive. This is a nice car. You see, it goes towards one, positive. And then subjectivity is about having opinions. So it's from zero to one. Zero means objective, like a fact, and one means totally subjective. Now let's try this on one of these reviews from the movie Diana, and this review is on Rotten Tomatoes. If I uh, paste it here, press enter, you see it's a bit minus, so it's negative. As you can see, the review itself is also two and a half out of five. Okay, now, for sentiment analysis, a lot of times you don't need all this, all these words. For example, of does not add much sentiment, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> value. Or the does not have much semantic meaning to add to the value of uh, sentiment or and. That's why people normally clean up their texts and this is what we're going to build. If I put in all the text and press enter, these are the words worth analyzing. Much movie feels made specifically, you see? So these are content words, not just prepositions or commas or characters. So I can also show you that it removes characters. For example, if I say something like 222 at D, I don't know, at G, dot com uh, go to ww up here dot the w dot f f g g i don't know dot n l press enter you see all the characters and numbers are removed now also the propositions as well so this is what cleaning a text is about okay now let's see what we need to install to build this nice app the first thing we need is Streamlit to make this happen. Now I'm going to open up my PyCharm and there's a code here. So you should install Streamlit first. I have several uh, tutorials on Streamlit. So just go to your terminal and type in pip install Streamlit. But try to do it down in your terminal. Once you've downloaded that, installed it, then you should import it. And give it a, just a name, a nickname, ST. Then let's also get pandas. Pandas is used for analyzing, for data analysis, that is turning data into rows and tables and P PDFs or other read PDFs or CSVs and stuff like that. Once you've pip installed the pandas, then import it, give it a nickname. Then we need text blob for sentiment analysis. TextBlob is a Python library. 
So their website is here, textblob.readdocs.io and if you go down below here, you can see how to install it. Just in your terminal, pip install textblob and also you need to Python download corpora. This is based on NLTK library. So you need to download also the corpus. Then you can see all the instructions here as well. Okay, once you've downloaded those things there, you need to import text blob like uppercase T and B here. And lastly, import clean text just for cleaning up our texts. And you can find it here on PyPy clean text. You just pip install clean text and then you import it as easy as that. Okay, so once we've done these, we can start with Streamlit. So I'm going to comment these out first to show you how things are done. And okay, like this. Now, to start, let me stop my terminal and I will start it all over again. To start, you need to go to Streamlit Run and give it the name of your file, like main.py for me, for instance, main.py, and you press enter. Okay, your server starts running now. If it doesn't, you can see it here, you can click on one of these. Now here is what we have, well, it's empty. So on the right side, we have this menu. You can put on a setting, you can just uh, change the theme from dark to light. Let's just go, let there be light. Run on save means whenever you save your source code in your PyCharm, it will automatically run here. Let's do that. And that's it. Okay. Let's go back to PyCharm and start. So the first thing we need a header. So ST like streamlit.header and give it a nickname, give it a name here. If I save this and if I go back, you see this happens there. Then we need some expanders. And what's an expander? is basically this thing that expands, very self-explanatory. It should have a label like analyze text, for example, here. And then you should say with st.expander, columns, and then indentation. It's just like with open. So then text, give it a variable of an input. We're going to create a text input, st.text input, a value of text here, which is this one text here and this is the text input which is empty now so now we say if text that is if that input is not empty has some value in it and someone presses enter do something what should it do now it's time to do some sentiment analysis we say okay blob create a va um, variable well, you can name it whatever you want out of the text blob class so that is uppercase t and b and pass it in the value that the user inputs into text put it here now we have access to our text blob then st the right is here right just writes things here on the screen write something let it polarity equals and then blob dot sentiment dot polarity blob that we created dot sentiment dot polarity gives me a number between minus one and plus one and we are going to round it up only to two decimal points do the same thing for subjectivity blob dot sentiment dot subjectivity and give me that now if you save it and go back it should be okay this is good press enter you see polarity subjectivity awesome so that it was as easy as it can be now what about cleaning the text now for cleaning the text we are going to create another text input using streamlet st and give it a label assign it to a variable pre like for pre cleaning and then we say if pre, if that text input is has a value in it now and someone presses enter, then write on the screen something. What? Clean up that text. So clean text dot clean. You can see the documentation here actually. 
So clean text dot clean, then you can give it a text. So clean text dot clean, and then pass it the text that you want, which is for me like pre. Then we have some arguments here. Clean everything, we say false, not everything. We want to keep some of them. And extra spaces, true, clean up extra spaces. Stop words, true, stop words are like is, are, am, this, that, of, those kind of not very valuable words. Lowercase, true, they turn everything into lowercase. Numbers, true, means get rid of the numbers. And punct, for punctuation, true, get rid of the punctuation as well. Now, there are some other options here if you take a look. Um, for example, stemming, like if there is goes, he goes, it turns it into go, like. And yeah, there are some other options as well. You can just take a look at the documentation. Now, let's save this and go back to our streamlet. So here, let's set it to run on save. Oh, it's not this one, sorry, this one, yeah. So for clean text, let's say this is a good car. You see, just good car remains. Perfect. Okay, now let's get to the nice part, which is the CSV. So again, we should go with an expander. So here, you see an expander that when you click on it, it expands. And there is an upload option there. So let's create a variable UPL for upload, st.fileuploader, and give it a label of upload file, just some, something that people can see like upload file here. Then this happens by itself. Now we are going to define a function, but I'm going to uh, tell you why uh, later so and also this function I will tell you later now here is the part that we read that file from the user that is if upload if someone drops something there or uploads something create a data frame and data frame is basically like a table from an excel sheet and here we've specified excel you could also say csv by the way but since I had an Excel sheet, I just put it to um, CSV. And if you use Excel, you need to also pip install pi, um, what was the name of it, I don't know, uh, open pi Excel, something like that. And yeah, I think so. And then you pass in what the user has passed in, upload it. I also had another column called unnamed df, uh, unnamed uh, zero, so I just deleted that column. And now we are going to create a new column called score. And what that column does is going to calculate the sentiment of the tweets because our column already now, uh, our data frame, our table has a column called tweets with Biden's tweets. So we are going to grab every tweet, get the sentiment of every tweet, put it next to it in another column called score. So for that, we are going to apply the score function, which we define here, which is define a score function, which grabs one parameter, that is one tweet. Then we create the variable blob one, which turns that tweet into an object, which we can use. And then what it should return is a polarity of the sentiment of that blob one. So it means that is every tweet, this, uh, this function will be called on every tweet. And remember, you don't need any parentheses or X here. You don't need this. It knows that it should grab whatever there is as an argument. So apply that function to the tweets column. Then we want to create another column called analysis and apply another function on the scores. That is if the score is 
here, if the score is above a 0.5, consider that positive, return positive. If it's below minus 5, uh, minus 05, consider that negative, else consider it neutral. So it will apply that function in every score. It goes through scores and then checks it and creates another column called analysis and puts neutral positive or negative next to it. And in the end, just give us an overview of the first five rows. You can just turn it into, I don't know, first 10 rows, for example. Now let's see how it goes. I have my Biden tweets here. I drop it here and then look, the first 10 rows. So it goes through the tweets column, applies the function score function, which is uh, calculating the polarity score, puts it here and next one and next one. Then another one, we created another function, analyze, which was applied on this column, which goes through this. If it's below uh, or between minus 0.5 and then plus 0.5, consider it neutral. If it's uh, 0.5 or above, consider it positive and that sort of stuff. Now that we have this, we need to create, make it available for downloading. So for downloading, you can refer to the documentation of Streamlit and I've get, got that from there. So you need to uh, have like this cache uh, because they say that it prevents, so you see, computation on every rerun. So because normally whenever it's running, you see everything is done again and again and again. And if you have a large data sets, data set, that's going to cost you a lot. So um, we're going to set a cache here, like st.cache and a decorator. And then here we have define a function, convert the F, we pass in just one argument there, and it should return df to s csv that is turn whatever you get and turn it into a csv file and encode it to uh, utf8 now what is our csv going to be our file it's going to be this function so we're going to call a function now with a df that is a data frame this data frame here the data frame that we have already all the table so we're going to convert it to, to CSV with this encoding and put it inside CSV. Now we're going to create a download button like this, a CDA download underscore button, several arguments again. So we have a label like download data as CSV. As you can see here, download data CSV. What is data? The CSV, that is the converted file, the converted data frame. What is the file name? Sentiment.csv. This is how it will be saved. And what is the MIME? It's going to be text for slash CSV. And that's it. Now, if I go again, let's try everything. So text here, let's just grab one uh, here and put it there to see how it works. Is minus, yeah, it's poor little rich girl, but the, um, yeah. And the clean text should also work if I just do this, perfect. And for this, we can close it off here. We can drag and drop this CSV file there. And now we see the implementation so fast. You can click on it, you see, in order descending and ascending and also alphabetical that was it for today thank you very much for watching and listening